themselves up. Yeah. Uh, um, they didn't really care that much about the West, and it turned out that they got screwed. But um, so I went. To, we went to Paris for vacation. Came back, and I got the idea to write a novella about uh, about 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 that uh, called uh, La Vie Continue, and that was also the English title, in which I was a character myself living in Paris, um, and. That was written in Los Angeles. Uh, and then I wanted to uh, have some excuse to spend a long time in, in France uh, uh, at, and at the same time uh, to write a novel about uh, what was happening in, in, in the then Soviet Union. Uh, so I got a contract to write Russian Spring. Uh, I mean, uh, in, in Paris, uh, although the thing is, although the novel is called Russian Spring, uh, most of it takes place in Paris, but part of it takes place in Russia. So um, I had to get to go, get into the Soviet Union to do research for this novel, um, which wasn't so easy at the time. In fact, it wasn't easy at all. Um, I at that point was the president of something called World S. Well, actually before that, anyway, it's, it's all complicated. I'm a citizen of the world, but I was living in Paris, and I was in um, Budapest, and I met, um, I had got the car, I was riding Russian Spring, but I hadn't gotten into Russia yet. Uh, uh, I had met uh, um, a publisher. Well, not a publisher, at that point he was um, um, willing to be. Well, he, no, it was, he, he, was, he was a Russian publisher. He was a Samizdat publisher. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he was out, I met him in, Buda, in, in Budapest, where he said, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm now at last allowed to be in a free country, uh, which was then Hungary. So uh, I made the arrangement also to publish the book in Russia. The first time that this sort of thing has been done to publish it, publish it in Russia first. But in the meantime, I've written two drafts of the book without ever getting into Russia. Uh, finally, I got into Russia through the Writers' Union. At that time, I was the president of World SF, and it was all kind of political stuff with the KGB and all that kind of crap. Finally got in there in the dead of winter. Um, and that was my beginning that Budapest and that was my beginning with uh, what I call the Wild East, because after the Wild West in, in America, because everything was going on everywhere. Um, um, the Soviet Union was opening up. Uh, there was a world convention, world science fiction convention in Das Hag in, um, in the Netherlands, where for the first time there were people from the East coming to the West. Uh, and they uh, really didn't know what was going on. Um, so that was the beginning of the whole thing, was, was, was the winter 
Oh, I, I think it was 1989, it must have been. Yeah, I think the, the World Con was in 1989. Yeah, yeah. The World Con was in 1989. And, and so that was the beginning. Um, in order, I had a car, we rented a car, in order to drive around to see, you know, to see what we could see. Um, and in order, we wanted to go to, to uh, Prague. But in order to go to Prague, it was very hard to get a hotel at that period. It was all crazy. Uh, uh, so in order to go to, ho to get a hotel room in Prague, I had to promise somebody who later turned out to be the arms uh, uh, distribution guard for Czechoslovakia. I didn't know it at the time. He was also a publisher in, in, uh, of, of science fiction. <laughs> so in order to, go to, to get the room in, in in Prague, I had to agree to go into uh, uh, Slovakia uh, at, at, the, at the first thing that they had a science fiction convention there. They had no idea what it was. Uh, they had a Star Trek thing that was um, pirated uh, and with a voiceover in German with Slovakian subtitles, uh, and it went on from there. Um, so. People ask me why I stayed in Europe uh, as a writer. And what I usually answer is that Europe, for me, was not just like a, a science fiction writer, or, or a writer in general, but particularly for, for science fiction writer, writing about the future, writing about other worlds, that Europe um, was not just another world, it was another solar system. You have big planets, like France and England, well, England is not exactly part of Europe, or so, so they think. Uh, you know, France, Germany, Italy, and then you had smaller moons. Uh, this is one of them. Uh, 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 Serbia, um, Montenegro, which I've never been in, but uh, uh, Slovakia, which seceded from Czechoslovakia. Uh, the uh, this is at the time that the that Germany was being reunified, and that was totally crazy, because um, we spent time again at another convention in East Germany, where people were coming from West Germany, and they had no idea where they were. That that was another world to them too. Uh, one of the reasons that I, 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 I helped, I had to help a, a West German get back into West Germany from East Germany because I knew more about East Berlin than he did because I had been there before. Uh, uh, at this point, they would take, they, there were streets and, and metro stations that had no names because the previous names were things like Rosa Luxemburg and Lenin and stuff like that, and they were tearing it all down. Um, it, was, it was fascinating, it was crazy, um, and um, it was much more interesting just on, on, uh, on personal grounds, but also on literary grounds, to to stay in Europe, and, and, and that's how I stayed in Europe. Then, well, then there was 9-11, which I had been back in the States with Donna, and then uh, she came back to, to France, and we came back to, to New York. Now we have settled in Paris, and in the last month, we've been in four different places. We've been well, five different places, if you count Paris. We've been we were in Paris. We were in Barcelona the day of, 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 of you know, of, of the tragedy, the day of the, day of the uh, terrorist attack. Uh, we just came back from uh, Nantes for the Utopials, which is the biggest and best science fiction event on the planet. Um, and before that, I was in, we were in Rennes in, uh, doing a, 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 sh a short, um, a short film uh, uh, presentation where I was the the, the, pre you know, the president of the jury. When people ask me I am, whether I'm a political refugee, uh, and that's why I'm in France, it's not yet. Uh, 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 I, I didn't leave the United States because I detested the United States and had to flee. Uh, rather, it was positive. We came to Europe because it was more interesting to be in Europe. And as, 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 and as a writer, this is where things were happening. Um, and that's, 
how I can, uh, I also, well, uh, there's so much of this stuff. I, there was um, a man named Ian Hobana, who was, fa who, was a, who was a Romanian fan, supposedly, and this is under Ceausescu, and they um, somehow allowed, he, they somehow, he somehow went, was able to go to the West and go to these conventions. Uh, when Ceausescu fell, uh, and, and he dressed like you know, or like fans or something. Uh, no, he dressed he dressed in that silvery, cheap, KGB suit. Uh, and when Ceausescu fell, um, he came out again, and he was dressed like for the polo lounge in Hollywood. And I, I said, I see you've changed your uh, your image. Um, he said, Yes, those. Those who adapt survive, um, and now I'm an agent. I'd like to represent you. Um, and I said, okay. I'd never been to Romania. I'd never had anything published in Romania, and neither did anybody else really, unless it was pirated. And they couldn't pay in anything but their own currency. I said, okay. He proceeded to sell 17 books, and I kept going back and forth in Romania. It took me. Two trips to Romania to find out that Ian Hopana had been the uh, the commissar of the Writers Union, which made it easy for him to sell these books. Um, and so I've gone back and forth. I know Romania pretty well. Um, where else? Uh, we've been in we've been in Italy, Don and I together, which is another story. It's a sort of a Star Trek convention, in which I was partly Star Trek and partly partly a novelist. Uh, um, where else? Uh, we were in um, Iverdon and Sabarn in, 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 uh, in Switzerland for another event like that. Uh, we've been all over the place. Uh, 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 and what I, what, what, I, what I found here is, like, here in Serbia, um, uh, as an American, uh, we don't really know this. The Americans don't really know the story of, what they, of the backstory of anything that is happening in Europe, really. Um, and, and not even the, the front story. It's much more complicated and, in that way, much more interesting. interesting. I always think, think that the uh, European Union was a great thing for Western Europe in particular because it stopped, you know several thousand years of endless tribal warfare. And in fact, uh, up until recently, that was true. Uh, and in Russian Spring, which is not just about Russia, it was the future of, of the European Union in which Russia ends up in the European Union. Uh, now, it, of course, it has become a alternate reality story. Um, and it was also about, uh, well, one of the you know what, what, one of the things I said in there, which is certainly germane to what's happening now, particularly in Eastern Europe, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, you know, from, from the American point of view, it was very simplified to what happened in, in, when Yugoslavia collapsed. Uh, I le learned much more now in the last two days than than I knew of the, of, 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 of the um, complexities of this thing. You know, John says nothing. On what? The game of Thrones has nothing on us. <laughs> well, uh, no, 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 uh, no. Well, yes and no, but uh, um, in a sense, that kind of science, that kind of fantasy f fiction is all about that, or vice versa. The Wild East, yeah, uh, this is, there was more things going on here, more evolution, uh, and now it seems to, to be devolution, but uh, if, 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 well, what I said, what, what I wrote in, in Russian Spring about the European Union uh, was that one of the things that was positive that was supposed to happen is the idea of a, of a, a Europe, a union, a Europe, not of nation states, but of peoples. Because if, if you look at the, all you have to do is look at what happened when, when Yugoslavia collapsed. You have, you have, you had Serbs, you had Croats, you had Montenegrins, you had um, who 
were involved in setting up their sovereign states. Uh, if that wasn't, if you have the same thing we just came back from, well, you could call it Spain or you could call it Barcelona. Uh, we live above a Basque restaurant in Paris. Uh, it is, they used to say that America was a melting pot, but that was never true. Uh, uh, America was a mosaic of, of all these cultures of the world. In Europe, but it wasn't physically separated because it was, it was an immigrant country, people coming from all over. In Europe, you have all these cultures, all these languages, all this food. Uh, we just had a wonderful Serbian, Serbian meal uh, we didn't know anything about Serbian food before he came here, really. Um, uh, and uh, it was a great thing. Uh, what's going on now, I think, is, is, is that that, has, that idea is being lost, that the strength of your culturally should be the mosaic, not the attempt to create a melting pot because people don't want to be melted. They don't want to be melted by Brussels. Everybody says, Brussels, Brussels, you know. Uh, and it's true, it's, it's, it's a, um, a bureaucracy with no head. Uh, even Henry Kissinger said, uh, if I want to call, talk to Europe, who do I call? Well, who? Uh, so the idea, and, and, and one of the main storylines in, in, in Russian Spring, was the transformation of, 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 of the European Union into a union of peoples, not sovereign states. Uh, and admittedly, um, for various reasons, but I didn't realize I was doing it with, with other, other books, uh, uh, um, Child of Fortune and Boy Captain Steel, these were working, if not utopians, very advanced cultures cultures and societies with no governments. No governments at all, they didn't need them. Um, uh, so that, um, I think, at least for me personally, well sometimes, as an American, I, I had two versions of Europe, at least when I first came here. One is that I felt like a, a colonial coming into a much more sophisticated culture. On the other hand, I also sometimes felt like uh, the only adult in a sandbox full of kids fighting with each other. Um, and I think both things have become true now. Um, uh, I don't know how much more I'm gonna write about this, but uh, I think the strength of, this, of Europe is the thing that people now think is the weakness of Europe. If, if, if various cultures could accept the benefits of being part of this mosaic, uh, a lot of problems would evaporate. It's, 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 the, it's, it's, it's the sovereign states uh, who are doing power games against each other. It's, 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 it's the um, social and tribal and ethnic and cultural subcultures that uh, are fighting, in some extent, to be sovereign states. Get rid of sovereign states, and you don't have a problem. You have, you have one overall uh, union that takes care of the stuff that, that has to be taken care of, and everything else is uh, on, on a level of, of um, a union of peoples and not sovereign states. Um, and that's the beginning of this. I mean, like, like this, you have any other questions? I'm, I'm just trying to lead into this. It's very complicated. Um, because when you talk about science fiction uh, in relation to this, one of the basic themes of science fiction is about relationships with the other, with the other, whether it's aliens, or, um, or, or, you know, uh, mainly you know, other, uh, others, whether it's positive or negative. Usually it's negative because 
that makes for good drama. Um, sometimes it's positive, but that's that's a more elevated kind of kind of kind of literature. Uh, and I think the history of Europe, of Europe, the history of the world, is the history of the of the confrontation of of two of of, 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 of different cultures. I also wrote a book called Mexico, which was not, which was about the Spanish conquest of, of Mexico. It was the same thing: two cultures who, in different ways, were both very sophisticated. Uh, but differently. Uh, they had different strengths and different weaknesses. Uh, and I think that, that a lot of science fiction uh, is about that sort of thing. First Contact, uh, Star, or S Star Wars, or much more positively, Star Trek, where it's very interesting in terms of Star Trek. You know, Gene Roddenberry uh, really had an idealistic view of going to meet new civilizations and, 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 and we have gone before. And the interesting thing about the evolution of Star Trek, one of the things over the past 50 years, I wrote Doomsday Machine, and they just did the, the 50th anniversary of <coughs> Doomsday Machine. I don't know how that makes me feel. Uh, but um, the Klingons, Began as as the evil em, you know, as, as the evil enemies of the Federation, and, and now uh, they're all Klingon um, <coughs> dictionaries. The Klingons uh, were accepted, uh, um, and I think this this story, this kind of story, is is, is, is central to, to to good science fiction, uh, uh, and and is relevant. To, to the present day, and not just to the present day, but to the history of the entire planet. Um, which is why, um, it was the same thing with, versus, uh, with, with the Druid King, you had <coughs> the, the Romans and the, and, 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 and the Gauls, and eventually that became France. Um, and I think there is um, a similarity between the, the central story of, of, of science fiction uh, and of history of, of, of our species, which uh, I never really thought, I, I, I didn't think this way till I, till, till, I, till I was living in Europe, because America is a whole, is a whole, different, is a whole different situation. Um, and well, do you have another question? Uh, you're, you're mentioning Druid King, uh, it was based on a, on a film. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, it was based on a film, uh, um, a terrible film. Um, I, I was involved in, in writing seven, seven versions of this film, uh, which, was shot, which was shot in Bulgaria. It was shot in Bulgaria, it was supposed to be shot in Romania, but the Romanian army wouldn't wear the costumes of the Romans. So it was shot, it was shot in Bulgaria. Um, it was the, it, again, it, it was that story, it was the story, it was one of those stories. It was a story of, the, of, 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 of the, a conflict between Julius Caesar and Vercingetorix. Um, my third um, version uh, was really, of, of the script, was, was really the best version. I was told that by a very good friend. The movie came out, it was very bad. Um, and I, my friend Richie Shore, who got me involved in the whole thing in the first place, um, told me, no, you've got to write a book, you've got to turn this into a book, you don't want to lose, you, you cannot lose this. I said, I don't want to do that. Um, I never do that. Um, when I read the first, but, you know, when I read what I had written, I said, yeah, he was right, I've got to do this. So that's why I wrote the book. And that's why also, the title of the book, the Druid King is not the title of the movie either in French or in English, um, and that's why and, and that's why I wrote that. And um, um, it's the same kind of story. It's the same kind of story. Um, Can you tell us a bit more about uh, Osama the God? It was uh, it was it's it's a complicated venture, which well, 
barely got published with difficulties in, in, in back in the U.S. Well, you want to say anything? Yeah. Um, one of the things that interests me most um, in Norman's writing and what he's spoken about is the other. Um, he recently wrote uh, an article, I believe, for Asimov, where he wanted to use the word justification <coughs> to describe how the Americans uh, used a word to alienate human beings from human beings and giving them this, this word, slow stings. And the magazine wouldn't allow it. They thought it was politically incorrect. He made him use, they made him use another term, warmification or something like that. But well, that what, he, what you've been talking about is how there is a separation between those and the other, which enables combat rather than communication. Well, what, what I was starting to talk about was what actually happened. We were in New York, right close up when, at 9-11. And uh, Liberation, a uh, French newspaper, asked me to write some, you know, a thing about it. And then a year later, they asked me to do a, percent, a, a, a you know, a second thing. And people kept saying things, when are you going to write a novel about this? Um, and people were writing novels about it, but, they were, but the novels were about how they felt experiencing what had happened. And I wasn't in your, I really wasn't interested in it. I said it's too hard <coughs> to write this book. Uh, but then, what came to me was, uh, the book had to be not written about 9-11 per se, but about uh, the consciousness of the kind of people, who, of, 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 of jihadis, who do, who do that kind of thing, and why, and Islam. Uh, and so, um, there's a, a line from a, a Stone song. No, wait a minute. No, it's, it's, it's yeah, yeah, sympathy for the devil. So I knew that I nobody was doing. I wanted to write a, 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 a novel from the point of view of a of, of a, a, a somewhat in the future of, of a jihadist and how a young innocent young man becomes involved and in that. Uh, and that was sympathy for the devil, because it, it was the story of, um, of how a young boy, a young man, becomes a jihadist and all of that, but remains a sympathetic character. Sympathy for the devil. Um, and I, I knew that was uh, tough stuff uh, to publish. I knew it from the beginning. Uh, um, uh, so I usually would try and get a contract for a book before I wrote it. This time, I didn't even know if I could write it. Uh, so I don't want to, um, I just, sat, first of all, I thought I was just going to write a, a novelette. And then I got about 40 pages into it, and I, I realized I wasn't writing a novelette, I was writing a novel. But by that time, I realized that um, I'm writing this because uh, nobody else is doing it, so I have to do it. And there's a good public re there's a good publishing reason why nobody else is doing it. Um, so when I finished the book and tried to sell it, I got I got one classic rejection, where the, where, where the editor and the publisher said, uh, "We're not going to publish this, and no other American publisher will touch it with a fork." Uh, and they didn't. Uh, um, Meantime, I was able to publish it in French. It was published in French long before it was published in the States. It finally got published in the States uh, in a small press last year. Uh, or maybe it was this year, yeah. No, yeah, it was the beginning of this year. Um, because it was, it was, you know, it was politically hot potatoes. It, uh, uh, but because, because it was hot potatoes, that's why I felt it had to be written. Um, and I knew I was asking, I, I knew I was going to be in trouble with this thing. I had no illusion about that. I didn't try and, uh, and get a contract to write this thing because I knew I would never get it. Uh, I thought, you know, I would have a chance to sell it afterwards, but the, the politics of it were, were, were poisonous like that. 
Um, so that's what happened with that. Um, it is simply, it's only been published in French, French in a small edition in English, and no place else. Uh, yeah, right, no place else. Never, uh, never been published in Germany, never been published here, never been published in Spain, where I've had a lot of things published. It's uh, still, uh, it's probably more controversial than ever it was. This is written before uh, what was going on in Syria and, and Iraq and all that stuff. Um, so that's the story of, of, of Osama the Gun. Uh, and again, it was to make a you know, to, to, to talk about the difference between a, 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 a sympathetic personal char a personally sympathetic character. Uh, who commits um, what we would consider, you know, hideous um, political crimes, uh, terrorist crimes, without really even wanting to get into that initially. Also, because there's a big part of it that takes place in the Hajj, which is a whole other story, that Islam itself is not the same thing as Middle Eastern Palm. Uh, uh, it's involved in it, it certainly is, uh, but, but, but it's simplistic uh, to not make a distinction between Islam as a religion uh, and Islam as a fascist political monstrosity as it is in, in the Middle East. Um, and that's the other thing that I don't think, people, yeah, at least certainly people in the States, and even more so now, people in Europe don't want to hear. Do you think that uh, the years you've spent, spent writing uh, science fiction, writing about the other, has uh, been helpful to, to you creating a sympathetic character in Osama? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, um, because for me, um, the central What makes, what makes science fiction science fiction? Uh, the, the word is wrong. Uh, um, it's speculative. Speculative fiction is a better description. It doesn't have to take, uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be about science or technology. But what's more central is the, is how the external surround affects human consciousness and how human consciousness affects the, 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 the surround. And <coughs> most good science fiction, speculative fiction, is, is, is about that one way or another. Um, and even the historical fiction I was writing, that I've written, you know, Mexico or, or, or The Druid King, is also about that. It, it's because, um, that is, you know, that, that, that's what's central to this kind of fiction, I think. So being experienced uh, in writing that kind of fiction, uh, I think made it, I would say easier, but maybe easier to write something like uh, um, Osama the Gun, or even, or even the uh, uh, Mexica, or, 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 or Vercingetorics. Um, well, I mean, the Druid King. Um, yeah, yeah. So I think I think that things uh, uh, are in some ways the same on, on a literary level. I think. I think that your fiction um, invokes consciousness and a sharing of consciousness, as alien as it might be, rather than war, opposition, murder, death trying to understand the other and achieve a consciousness that's sy sympathetic, if not accepting, but able, but will enable us all to evolve and enlighten. His book, um, People's Police, you know the situation that's happening in the United States with Black Lives Matter, with Antifa, uh, with the uh, police situation, this book offers a situation 
a way to approach the violence and bring about a new consciousness and a working together of the police with the people. And well, I think that, that your approach to the other is a sharing of consciousness and understanding. Well, basically, if you're writing fiction about, you know, contact with the other, whatever the other is, you can only do one of two things, really. The other can be viewed as the enemy. I don't care if it's science fiction, or historical fiction, or even the way that real uh, countries regard each other, cultures regard each other. Either the other is the enemy, or something that you fear, or that you hate, or that or you feel is inferior to you, or the enemy, or, or, or the other is something that uh, you're interested in that you want to learn from, that you want to experience from, um, that you can have a positive relationship with, that, that enhances your own consciousness and your own culture. You really can't do anything else. It's really, it's either the other is a positive thing, gook, or, or it's gookification. Uh, uh, and, and that goes, it, you know, it, 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 it's, it, it's kind of inevitable. It's, it, it's the dramatic inevitability of it. If you're writing that, it's going to be one thing or the other. There's no third thing you can do about that. Um, you can write it from the point of view of, of the alien of the other. You can write it from um, the point of view of, of, of humans or, or, or our culture meeting the other. Or, or, or you can't do anything. Uh, um, do you, there can be an exception. In, in, in Mexico, I couldn't write the book, I had a c contract for it, uh, until I had a viewpoint character that I made up who was outside both the Mexican, the, the Mexican culture and the Spanish culture to, to some extent, and he was the, the narrative voice, cynically in a way. You can do that too, you can write up, you know, from the third viewpoint. But basically, uh, I think the history, the entire history of the planet is really revolving around the clash, the clash or the meeting between different cultures and different civilizations. It's inevitable. That's, 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 a, that's a story of our species.